Hey guys, how's it going? So this is gonna be the next, I guess, installment of what's the word? And today's word is one that I care about more than most words in science. And that word is biodiversity. You've probably heard it or heard it mentioned by somebody else and wondered, what exactly are they talking about? Is it just how many species of animal and plant are in an area? No, it's not. And I'm gonna tell you kind of, oh, there's these strange beetles flying all around me. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, so biodiversity isn't just that. It's not just species richness. Um, it it kind of describes the ecosystem as a whole. And where I am now, I think, kind of introduces this topic really well. I'm in the last remnant of the Sauk Prairie, which was this once massive expanse of sand prairie in central Wisconsin. And all that's left is this patch behind me. That's it. That's all that's left of the entire prairie because it's been replaced by what's to my right, which is corn and other agricultural crops. And this just illustrates it because when you lose, there's so many different prairie species out here. I mean, probably at least dozens of plant species and lots of animals, whereas here it's just one species, corn. And when we lose this and replace it with this, we start to have some problems. So we're gonna visit a few different nature preserves today to try to explain biodiversity to you and help you understand why it matters as much as it does. But along the way, I'm hoping that we can find some cool animals and plants and who knows, who knows what we'll see, but it's a beautiful day, so let's get going. So I've explored about half of this prairie. Um, it's not very big, it's only like 40 acres. So I'm already halfway across, but one of the things I've noticed is just how many plant species there are. There's so many. Um, at first glance, you might think, okay, there are a lot, there's a lot of flowers. But then I started to look around in the ground and there's these little clovers down here and there's, there's all these little plants popping up. And it got me to thinking that prairies are a really good example of why biodiversity matters. So remember, I said that biodiversity is not just the amount of plant and animal species in an area. Well, biodiversity is also the influence of outside factors like soil health and temperature and shade and all these other things that contribute to how healthy the ecosystem is. So why does that matter? Well, in the case of prairies, plants are extending their roots down way deep through the sandy, nutrient-poor soil and pulling up water and nutrients so that they can grow. As they do so, they allow other plants to come in and colonize, which then helps the animals to eat those plants and the animals to eat those animals. And then, when we decide, hopefully we don't do this as much in the future, but when we do decide to replace prairies with cornfields like the one I showed you earlier, guess what? We've got really, really fertile soils because these plants have already done the work for us. It's called an ecosystem service and it's an important piece of biodiversity that people miss. Um, and that's why it matters. Whatever we end up doing with habitats, if it wasn't for, ah, this ant's biting me. Um, if, oh my God. If it, if it wasn't for um, the services these plants and animals provide us, well, we wouldn't have the lives we live now. We wouldn't be able to raise this corn for our cattle or for us. Um, we wouldn't be able to just be successful in general because we wouldn't have any oxygen because the plants give it to us. So um, we're gonna keep exploring. There's a few other preserves I wanna check out, but I thought that this prairie really illustrated why biodiversity matters. So as I was looking for different examples of biodiversity out in this prairie, I came upon something that I thought was really cool, especially being in central Wisconsin. This, prickly pear cactus, isn't that crazy? And prickly pear cactus is a really good example of biodiversity because there's a number of animals that rely on this succulent for kind of the water intake that they need and for food because it's really nutritious. There's actually people that eat prickly pear. But the real reason I wanted to point out this prickly pear is because for those of you that don't know, I have a special magnetism for cactus. Um, not as in I can find them, but as in they seem to um, stick to me very well. And I thought I'd tell a little quick story about one particular experience with cactus that I had. I was down in Arizona with a couple friends and we were kicking cactus, um, jumping cholla, which breaks apart. And we're kicking it along on the road like smart young teenage boys do and one got stuck to my shoe. And so the only way to get it off was to flick it with your fingernail. Well, I bite my fingernails, so I don't really have much uh, going on in that department. 
and I went to flick it and it got stuck to one of my hands and I tried to flick it off that hand and long story short, both of my hands were connected by a large piece of jumping joya cactus. And I was screaming and yelling. Well, the end of the story is I had this cactus connecting my hands with spines going all through my skin and my the instructor of this trip I was on took these forks and he's like, I'm gonna get this cactus off. One, two, and on two, he ripped it down and I let out this blood curdling scream that is remembered by all who was there very well, I'm sure. Um, so, me and Cactus don't have the best relationship, but I do think Cactus is really cool because of the role it plays in biodiversity. Um, it's a really important plant and it's cool to see Cactus out here. I mean, this is probably the only population of cactus anywhere nearby, um, at least for, for many, many miles. So, really cool to see. So, let's keep going. I'm at a place that protects an entire watershed in Sauk County, Wisconsin. And there's steep quartzite cliffs over here. There's a tamarack bog over here. And I came upon something along the trail that I thought really captured the essence of biodiversity. I don't know what it is. It looks like a possum or a raccoon. Something died right here. And it is just covered in carrion beetles. And so what carrion beetles do is they have a really good way of detecting dead flesh and they converge on it, and they start eating it, and they lay their eggs in it, and they break this animal down so quickly and turn it into nutrients for all these plants to grow. Um, yeah, they might be gross, and I would not reach my hand down into that possum carcass um, right now. Um, oh God, just I'm just thinking about what that would be like. No, I'm not gonna do that. But it's so amazing that all these animals exist to just paint the whole picture here you know they put nutrients in the soil the plants grow the animals feed on the plants it's all connected and that's a really important piece of biodiversity every animal and plant and microorganism and wind and sun and all these things are all interconnected which is so amazing to me so I just had to point out this example of biodiversity it's gross but probably as important as any other um, thing that happens in this forest I mean what would happen if, if these decomposers did not exist? It would be a stinky place, that's for sure.